roll call. We're all present this evening, all seven of us. Tonight, our invocation will be given by Kevin Ward with the Central Assembly, Central Assembly of God. And our flag salute, Chief O'Rourke, would you like to lead us in the flag salute after the invocation? <coughs> Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're honored, Lord, to uh, be here tonight. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, of living in Northwest Oklahoma, and especially here in Garfield County and Enid, Oklahoma. We pray your blessing on this meeting, God. We ask, Lord, that you would favor these that serve our community. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, continue to give them wisdom and direction as they lead our community. And Father, we ask, Lord, that your hand would continue to bless this area. We thank you for all the good things that you do for us. We thank you for uh, the wonderful place to raise families and to live in community with one another. And God, we just ask for your continued blessing on our city and our area, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Item. Kevin, thank you. Thank you. You may stay as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Item four. Consider approval of minutes of the regular session of October 1, 2013. Motion to approve the minutes. I second that. Motion to approve and second. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 5 awards, presentations, and organizational business. Item 5.1. Present the bed available for adoption at the city animal shelter. Well, tonight we have a chihuahua, probably dachshund mix. He's about six, seven years old. He's already neutered, so he's ready to go. And, uh, we named him Rocket. And he'll be out at the animal shelter. Uh, we're open between 10 and 6, Monday through Friday, and on Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 3. And he would like a good home. He's really a nice little dog. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 6, under hearings. <coughs> Item 6.1. Conduct a public hearing amending the Enid Municipal Code 2003, Title 11, entitled Zoning, Chapter 8A, entitled I-1, Planned Industrial Park District, amending Section 11-8A-4, entitled Submission of, Devel of Development Plan by eliminating submittal to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, amending Chapter Chapter 8B, entitled I-2, Industrial Light District, amending Section 11-8B-2, entitled Submission of Development Plan by Eliminating Submittal to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, amending Chapter 8C, entitled I-3, Industrial Heavy District, amending Section 11-8C-2, entitled Submission of Development Plan by Eliminating Submittal to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and Providing for Repealer, Savings Clause, Severability, and Codification. Chris? Thank you, Mayor, City Commissioner, City Manager. This is a companion item to the Commercial Site Plan Review Ordinance that you changed last month and will go into effect on uh, October the 26th of this month. This covers the three industrial districts that we have, I-1, I-2, and I-3, and it does the same thing as the commercial site plan. It allows staff to review those, and uh, the city then can issue a permit without going to MAPC. Are there any questions? David? Um, it seems like on the Planning Commission, these were some of the more controversial ones in terms of 
you know, no, nobody wants a, an, an I-2 zone in the middle of their <coughs> arm district. Is there still opportunity for public input to the staff, or how would objectors handle this if it doesn't come before the planning commission? The, uh, if the property is not zoned industrial, then it would require rezoning, and that will continue to go to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, and then is forwarded to this body to be approved or denied. So that, this is only is, areas that are already zoned that way in the first place. If it's already zoned and they're developing, just like commercial is and you're developing, then you simply follow, and there's only, uh, since you sit on the Planning Commission, you know there's a very detailed list for how we develop commercial, and a shortened list of how we develop industrial, and for the benefit of the whole commission, there's only five items. One, you have to provide the location size of the area that you're developing. Two, you show the, um, the improvements and the ones that are surrounding you. You locate your buildings, you show your parking and your loading, and then you take care of your stormwater. Those are the only five elements that go into play, so they're actually the easier of the two, and uh, these are the ones that often do come to the Planning Commission and simply is, is a recommendation of what the ordinance already states. So I regret this wasn't there in front of you a month ago. That was my mistake. It should have been, and I'm correcting that tonight. Further questions, comments? Mike? Stand up to speak. Not on 6.1, no, sir. Thank you, Chris. Item seven, seven, community development. 7.1, consider an ordinance amending I-1 planned industrial district, I-2 industrial light district, and I-3 industrial heavy district ordinances. I'll move approval. I'll second. Motion by David, second by Rodney. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 1. Item 8, administration. Item 8.1, consider a resolution declaring the necessity for acquiring property for the Willow Road widening project and authorizing, instructing, and directing the city attorney <coughs> to commence condemnation proceedings if said property cannot be purchased and damages settled by agreement with the landowners. Shandy? Yes, this um, concerns the Willow Road widening project. As you know, the intent of this project is to widen Willow Road to four lanes. And this particular <laughs> item covers parcels seven and 7.1. Um, we have been unable to obtain these easements and condemnation has become necessary to secure them. Which which properties are you looking at? Talking about here, seven is the e is the easement. Seven point one is the temporary easement to do the construction. This is this piece of property we discussed uh, one or two meetings before. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Which ones we looked at before? Is that in foreclosure. That is the one that is in foreclosure, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who do we deal with if, if it's in foreclosure? Uh, Mr. Kaywood? This one actually is not in foreclosure. That would, that's parcel 20 Okay. On, on the south side. Yeah. So this one is not in foreclosure. And who are we dealing with? Uh, Bob Hope is the name of the property owner. Any questions? So we're, we're specifically referencing the number seven parcel. <clears throat> yes, for this item only, parcel seven. The little red box to the east of it be the next one. Okay. And, and the issue is they just can't come to an agreement on a price. That's the problem. I then. Then I, I move that we proceed with condemnation proceedings. Second. Okay. Motion by Tammy, second by Ron. I understand that that is six one hundredths of an acre. 
Is that correct? I don't know the exact dimensions of it. I'm sorry. Yes. For the firm and leisure, yes. Other questions, comments? Please cast your vote. Um, did I state who made the motion in the second? Yeah, you did. Motion carries 7 0. Item 8.2, <clears throat> consider a resolution declaring the necessity for acquiring property for the Willow Road widening project and authorizing, instructing, and directing the city attorney to commence condemnation proceedings if said property cannot be purchased and damages settled by agreement with the landowners. Shannon. I would move we approve this as well. It's the same as the last one. Second. Motion by Tammy, second by Mike. Bye. Further discussion? I understand that that's two one hundredths of an acre. I believe that's four one thousandths of an acre. <laughs> <laughs> the document says two one hundredths. Well, that's the temporary easement on seven. That would be parcel seven point one. It's two one hundredths. This one is four one thousandths. Four one thousandths of an acre. One hundred sixty-three square feet. Serious. Thank you. Further questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Seven zero. Thank you. Item eight point three. Consider a resolution amending the 2013-2014 Sanitary Sewer Capital Improvement Fund budget by appropriating additional <coughs> funds in the amount of three hundred and four thousand two hundred dollars to increase the 2013-2014 appropriated amounts for the Sanitary Sewer Capital Improvement Department. Gerald. This is a budget amendment uh, in the sanitary sewer fund to increase the fund by 304000 for three specific projects that are listed there. Uh, the sludge pump piping project, which is actually uh, item 8.4. Uh, <coughs> sludge pumping, uh, excuse me, uh, sludge piping system for 44000 uh, item 8.4. A sludge pumping uh, project that is going out for bid now, and you'll see at a future meeting when it comes back with the actual bids. Uh, the estimate was 150, so I want to go ahead and uh, include that funding now because we need to do it. And emergency repairs that you already approved on August 6th to stop a discharge out into uh, Skeleton Creek, I think it was, or Boggy Creek. Uh, so we wanted to lump all three of these items together uh, for funding. Uh, total up $304,000 recommended for approval. The funds come from the sanitary sewer. <coughs> will either come from the loan or the sanitary sewer fund, which we have funds available in, in both uh, with both options. Gerald, you've got, um, we've got uh, estimated the sludge pumping uh, portion of that at $150,000. I'm assuming that if it's north or south of that, then we'll have to have a, a secondary. Uh, would have to adjust it. I, I, the estimate there a that I got from the engineer. it in here, I guess, is, is what I'm wondering. I mean. Well, the, the reason we, we always put out an, an estimate of what our projects cost. The, the right. estimate on that one was about 140. 147,000. I just rounded it to 150. You're right. If it's significantly, if it's if it's more than 150, I would have to come back and uh, ask for more money. And I would do that at the same time that we brought the project forward for approval, uh, similar to the sludge piping system that's on this agenda. So I knew exactly the amount was 44,200, and uh, because that's what is an item you've already discussed is an item 8.4. That answer your question? Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to uh, figure out why it's, we've got it in in this one. I thought, well, it would be to save a, a secondary amendment to the budget. Yes. If you don't, if, if, you would rather, if, if you would rather wait, we can do that. <coughs> Come back when we know the exact amount. If it ends up being more than 150, we'll have to do it anyway. And if it comes in less, then we won't. These funds are restricted funds to begin with, that we have yeah. restricted sanitary sewer improvement fees that can fund this, and so it, it, even if it is left here, it will either be used up for right. other projects. It can't be used for anything but right. sanitary sewer. Right, I just, you know, I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, uh, approve the resolution. Second. The motion by Mike. One one question, if I just may. Just a second. On motion by Mike and right. second. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, go ahead. What uh, what else do we lack in completing this facility? Is, is the wastewater reclamation facility 
just about finished, or do we have quite a bit, few items yet to go? I, I, I don't, I can't answer that for you. I, I know that it's not complete, um, and perhaps that's something that we might want to bring at a future meeting to discuss. Or. I think that is something that we probably need to bring um, to the commission in a study session. There are some issues with the with the plant. I mean, for the most part, they are complete. There are some issues that we're not happy with. Um, yeah, I, I would like to get a status report on it. It's been uh, under construction now for several years. <laughs> and uh, just, just like to know what we've got left to go. Okay. Thank you. About 36 big ones, you're right. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item 8.4 Consider awarding a contract to Luck and Bell Incorporated, Enid, Oklahoma, for the water reclamation facility, sludge piping modifications, project number S 0703P. Contract number two, and authorize the mayor to execute all contract documents after review by the city attorney. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ben, a second by Ron. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 8.5 consider a resolution amending the 2013 2014 capital improvement fund budget by appropriating additional funds in the amount of $10,000 to increase the 2013-2014 appropriate amounts for the Capital Improvement Department. Yes, this is a budget modification in the Capital Improvement Fund and also EMA, which you'll see in a later item, 12.1. Uh, it's $10,000, uh, change order, uh, or actually not a change order, an amendment uh, to the architect's agreement having to do with the redesign of a parking lot uh, that Robert can discuss with you uh, either now or when item 8.6 comes up. The $10,000 uh, puts the funding in place to approve that item. Uh, I mentioned there's a companion item at 12.1. I'm assuming this is work that's already been done? Uh, yes, it is, Commissioner. This is uh, work of the redesign of parking lot number one. Uh, as you may recall, uh, we brought uh, on convergence to design the additional parking and we went to the uh, Renaissance Center, uh, which is actually parking lot one, which is south of the center, parking lot two, which is east of the center and southeast and parking lot three and four, which are west of the center. Um, can you bring up um, 8.6? I'll just cover that while I'm here if you like. But uh, this, uh, we did have to redesign parking lot one. We, it was designed to go to the full uh, block to um, south to Park Street. Uh, to provide for the parking spaces that we anticipate needed. Uh, the right-of-way was not available, property was not available at the time. We need to complete the, uh, uh, the parking. Uh, so, and I've shown you here, this is Park Street to the south, Event Center to the north, Independence and Grand. This is the facility that was designed. Uh, we had uh, convergence to redesign to bring it short of this area here to make sure our drainage, we had our, our sprinkler system, our water irrigation system, and our <coughs> landscaping and our uh, lighting system would work. Uh, and they did that. We did complete that work, of course. Um, and they, uh, we have negotiated this uh, cost fee with them, $10,000 for that cost. Um, again, contract with a million five. 375 for designing the Renaissance facility. We add the parking lot by uh, amendment number two at 76,000, and uh, we negotiated uh, this um, amended cost to make them owe on the redesign. I move we approve 8.5. <coughs> Motion by Ben. Second. Second by Mike. Further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Was that 8.5? Yes. 8.6. Consider approval of amendment number 5 with Convergence Design LLC, Overland Park, Kansas, to include additional services in the amount of $10,000. Project number M 1109. A. 
Parent commissioners, this is just the action of actually approving the uh, the. the I move to approve. Motion by Ben. Second. Second by Mike. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Item 8.7 Consider an ordinance amending Chapter 4, Title 4, Sections 4 4 1 and 4 4 2 of the Enid Municipal Code 2003. <coughs> to add a definition and to prohibit an owner slash occupant from allowing a nuisance on any sidewalk or parking space adjacent to that owner occupant's property and used by that owner occupants, consumers and or guests. Shandy. Mayor commissioners, this ordinance was first discussed at the September 17th study session. Um, what it does is add a definition for nuisance to prohibit um, an occupant or owner from allowing a nuisance to remain immediately adjacent to their property. And what, do you, what are we defining a nuisance as? I can tell you that. Um, the changes that we made to the ordinance, hold on, so it's easier to see. We change the definition of nuisance um, under 4-4-1 to include uh, bird or other animal droppings. And then to make that enforceable, we also had to define what an unlawful, un that it's unlawful to maintain a nuisance and apply it to owner occupants of these buildings. So the only change in the definition is to add bird or in addition oh, to what the nuisance is already defined as. The problem I see with this is is that the, the frequency of the cleanings is, I mean, you could literally go out there every day and there'll still be some. So it's it's going to be difficult to enforce and, and prove when was the last time somebody cleaned it. Um, I And I personally, I don't think that if the city owns the sidewalk, owns the street, owns the parking spaces and the trees, I don't, uh, I don't think that should be the uh, business owner's uh, responsibility. I don't think that we need to be penalizing business owners because I, I just don't. Who, who's going to actually go and, and uh, <coughs> determine uh, that we've got a nuisance there? I would imagine that. I don't. Is this a code issue or a police issue or what? <laughs> Either that or the fire department. Shot. <laughs> fire department could just go hose it off. But it, yeah. like, hey, they I could mean, be training. It comes down to fire who fire owns the property. Actually, the way it's written, I would think it's a police issue, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I may have made some enemies at the table of which I sit, but. Um, is, wouldn't this be an issue about I mean, who owns the property? I mean, if it's owned by the city, is the city not responsible for it? And the city is responsible for the for the sidewalk and the and the major um, the maintenance, maintenance of, of, of it. Could say that, but um, as far as trash and those kind of if you own a property and it's your business, it, it's it's to your advantage to put your best foot forward and have the trash is. picked up and those kind of things. We don't go through and pick up their trash. No, and it absolutely, as a business owner, you would want your business to be inviting. But I don't think we should be penalizing business owners for something that's out of everybody's control because nobody can do anything about the birds or we would have right and and it's a problem and i think it's a joint i mean i think we're all going to have to take care of it together i don't think we can penalize one or the other or hold somebody at fault or blame them for an act of nature that no one can control i think part of the problem is that there's been this ongoing that it hasn't been getting done and you know we trees are great we like trees i don't want to get rid of the trees but the um voluminous nature of bird droppings in some areas has been a bit of a hazard. What I'd like to, I understand that we don't want to penalize business owners, but I do feel like this has been a neglected issue that someone should be responsible for. Instead of deciding this today, I'd kind of like to see what it would cost for the city to buy a couple power washers and devote some man hours once or twice a month during summer months to 
keeping our sidewalks like clean. Summer, summer or when you know when the birds are worse. I know, Rob. It doesn't sound like fun. Or what um, it would cost to subcontract it. Or what it would cost to contract it out. And so I'd like to table this ordinance change uh, for you know at least one meeting and have some better idea of what it would cost for the city to just take on this responsibility as uh, an act of goodwill to our downtown to try to alleviate the voluminous bird droppings. It's a, to me, it's a huge health issue. It, it is a health sure. issue. It's a so I think health I, issue. we need a solution. No, but I don't think anybody's arguing it's that it's fault. an issue, but it's, I think, whose responsibility. And I think if we're, if we're going to be trying, you know, if we want to be business friendly and, and open for business and, and all that we want to do, I don't think we need to, to burden them with more, you know, uh, str you know, regulations and fees and, you know, things that they're they going to have to do. That if, particularly if we own the property, we own the sidewalk, we own the parking spaces and the trees, you know, if, if we make them responsible, do they then have the right to cut the trees down? Sure. And even if we can take care of this ourselves. We've already it, done that, Mike. Well, but if we can do that, take care of this ourselves at relatively minimal cost, but I'd like to at least know what that option is. If it's not feasible, then... But I, I think Rob out there every Sunday morning with the power washer is a really good idea. <laughs> I, I do have one other question. But I mean, it, it, does this only apply in the downtown area, or does it apply throughout the community? I mean, there's bound to be bird droppings in other parts of town. Right. It is going to apply... Basically, it's going to apply to um, any building or structure within the city limits. I mean, it's to that sits adjacent to a public sidewalk. <clears throat> to me, if the city doesn't do their part, eventually the public will tell the business owner what to do, or they'll start to, their business will start decreasing. I think their books will show that they need to keep it clean. Well, I think everybody thinks. I mean, I think everybody. Well, I was going to say common sense, but we know that how uncommon <laughs> that is. It's a super I think it's, I mean, it's a given that everybody want. I can't even, I can't even say that. Everybody clearly doesn't want their property to look nice because, but common sense would dictate that if you own a business that you want it to be inviting. So I think primarily the issue that we're doing this for is because we all know there's a bird dropping issue downtown. And so that we want to address that. And I think that that is going to be kind of a separate issue than this. But I mean, because this is going to end up affecting every business in town. But I mean, we already kind of have that in place anyway with our code. Anyway, I mean, you're supposed to keep your stuff cleaned up anyway. But the issue that we're really discussing is the downtown I made a motion, yeah, bird I'm, issue. So, yeah, Ben I'll made a motion to, motion. Sec to table it. Who made the motion? Ben. ben. Second. I, ben. Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Tabling, right? Correct. To table. Yes, sir. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item 8.8 .8, Consider a resolution supporting the nomination of Mayor Bill Shuey to serve on the Oklahoma Municipal League's Board of Directors. I'll make that motion. Maybe, you know, yeah, I'll make that motion. Second. <laughs> So why you want more time commitments, Mayor? I, I don't. Know. It's very important to the city of Enid to get to 48 different cities in that district because they rely on Enid, Oklahoma. It's, it's very simple. You, you would do an excellent job too. That's right. We're important to them, and they're important to the city of Enid. We have a motion and a second. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Mike. Second by Ron. Further discussion. Please cast your vote. <clears throat> Motion carries 7 0. I wasn't going to vote, but then I'd have to vote against what I've already said, <laughs> I've already said I would do <clears throat> if you all consented. <clears throat> Item 8.9 Consider a property exchange agreement with AC Development LLC, Wacomus, Oklahoma. Chris? Thank you, sir. Uh, to recap, the uh, the purpose of this agreement is, of course, to compensate AC Development for the land that we're going to use on the west side of Cleveland for a regional detention facility, um, use, utilizing the city's property on the east side to do that, uh, to meet our regional detention requirements, which we as the city must do, and to help harmonize the community around this development. Most importantly, to be fair and equitable to all parties. 
Uh, as you'll recall, there's about 61 acres in the PUD associated with this. Uh, it's been through many re revisions as it's been in front of this. The purpose of this is to integrate the local detention requirements, the water features, the regional detention requirements, and to incorporate some sort of park or green space on the north end of this to help that and to realign Rolling Oaks Drive. Make a motion to approve the uh, agreement. The second. Motion by Mike, second by Ben. Further discussion? Uh, well, one question by May. In, in, in the previous discussion we had on this item, you indicated that the city had retained the water rights on all of the property. Yes, sir. Uh, on the all east of side. the all of the property on the east side and underneath the 61.8 acres of the PUD residential on the west side. Does, does that mean that the property owners are not going to be able to drill a water well on their own property? We cannot separate domestic use from property from surface ownership. So they would, they would be able to put in an irrigation well if they wanted to. Okay. Say there's that. a limited amount of water you can get out of an irrigation Field. well. Say that again, please. They would be able to put in an irrigation well if they wanted to, and they and they would have to get the permit, get the drilling company, all of that that's necessary. Interest. talking about the individual as, as they have to today. As they have to today, and they are allowed to today. The individual landowners. Interesting. Good question. State law, from what I understand. Further discussion? Please cast your motion carries five two. Item nine consent. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the consent items. Consent item. Under nine point six. How do we do that? Uh, I'll make a motion to remove 9.6. Second. I have a motion by Mike, a second by Ben to pull item 9.6. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. I'll make a motion to approve the consent items. Motion by Mike, second by Tammy. Is that you, Tammy? Oh, that's fine. I'll second it. I want to keep you awake. Further discussion? <laughs> Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 9.6. <clears throat> Do we go to that right now? Yeah, Approve an increase in fees by Cimarron Taxi pursuant to Title Three, Chapter 9, Article A, Section 3 9A 1 of the Enid Municipal Code 2003. Shandy? Um, yes, this item stems from discussion that was had at our previous meeting about increasing the Cimarron taxi uh, fees. And I have the increases in front of me if you'd like to hear them again, but is there somebody signed up to discuss? We do have a question. I'm sorry, David. Um, What's the history of why does the city get the right to regulate a private business owner's fees? Why are we even involved in this business at all? As our ordinance says we will be. Is there a history to that? Why Can we just repeal that ordinance as an option? This seems like a silly issue to me. Why, why do we have anything to do with what he wants to charge? If he charges too much, nobody's going to ride. If he didn't charge enough, everybody will ride. So. Is this state law? Why are we involved in this? I couldn't speak to the history as to how this <coughs> came about. So I believe it charged. actually came about when I was still in high school. So I couldn't tell you why we have it. Mm -hmm. um, the best I can give you is that we have it and it is enacted as of right now. So if they want to raise their rates now, we would have to do it. If you would like to discuss um, removing that ordinance, I'd be happy to look into that and do that at a future meeting. I think it maybe it was put in just to keep it getting way too high because we want to have a taxi service. I believe it's a common practice in, in a lot of areas. It's to, to maintain. Uh, I think in part to avoid collusion in communities where there are, you know, there's active ridership and several different companies. Uh, you can make that case for every single service. business. In, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Providing that service. Right. Uh, but 
in an instance like this, I, I don't quite know. Supply and demand. I mean, are, is taxi services the only business that we do this to? I mean, is there this is a specific ordinance that has to do with taxis? Correct, because we because we have so many. Um, yes, <laughs> it's strange. The only to me. one I'm aware of. I know it's just. It is, and it was. I mean, it was recodified again in 2003. So even as early as that. It just doesn't make sense to me. That well, I would move to. The, oh, we have we have someone to speak. I mean, I would say we should move to approve this and maybe come back later and find out if this is a state law issue or something we can actually change. But to answer your question, yes, the ordinance specifically speaks no. to taxi rates. Mm -hmm. so. well, I'll second your motion to approve this rate increase currently, but I would like that ordinance brought back for a possible repeal. Motion by Ben. I'm sorry. Yes. We have we have somebody that wants to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Robert L. Coffee. He waved. He, he's good. I missed that. Yeah, he's <laughs> he said yeah. Did you wave this way? Yeah. Glad you're here. Thank you. Do you have a motion? Having no further discussion, we have a motion by Mike or was it Ben? Ben. Second by David. Please cast your vote. Motion carries seven zero. We probably need to put that on city. That's one thing. Study session. <laughs> Item ten. <clears throat> Recess to convene as the Enid Municipal Authority. All trustees are present of the Enid Municipal Authority under the Enid Municipal Authority regular median meeting. Item 12.1, consider a resolution increasing the 2013-2014 fiscal financial plan for the Enid Municipal Authority in the amount of $10,000. To approve. Second. Motion by Ben, second by Mike. Further discussion, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 12.2, <clears throat> approval of claims in the amount of $242,899.14. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Ron, a second by Tammy. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. We will now adjourn to convene as the Enid Economic Development Authority. All trustees of the Enid Economic Development Authority are present. Under item 15, Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting. Item 15.1, approval of claims in the amount of $174,193.61. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ron, second by Mike. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 16, we will now adjourn to reconvene as the Enid City Commission. Item 17, under public discussion, we have one person signed up, Charlie Pelichak. Please get, uh, state your name and your address. Yeah. Uh, good evening. My name is Charlie Polachek. Uh, I live at 108 East Owen K. Garrett here in Enid. And I just wanted to come down really quickly and say how glad I am to see the movement, the changing nature, and the, uh, the growth of Enid that's taken place. And that's a direct result of everyone in this room, outside of the room, anybody that's dedicated to Enid and is working hard to see it grow and become a better place to live. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I will make that motion. Mike, I have a motion by Mike, a second by? Second. Tammy, please cast your vote. Wow. Motion carries 7-0. That ain't bad. Carol, oh. There is taxi recognition. I didn't see a... But I don't see anything that says... I didn't see anything.